<laughs> well, I know that it has been a wonderful day, and I, I certainly don't think one day out of the year is deserving enough for uh, to honor mothers. It certainly should be a 365-day-a-year thing. I actually have a little Mother's Day special thing I want to do tonight. It won't be long, but today our message was about you know, children uh, that you know are motherless, that have been in bad situations, and that is a wonderful thing for us to be aware of. But tonight I want to do just a little special thing about moms. I came across a couple of uh, interesting uh, reads, and then I have a short little message. But um, I hope that you enjoy this. And once again, to all the moms, I just want to thank you for everything that you do for your families, what you do for this church, what you do for uh, just all the people that you come in contact with. But, uh, and we'll get to the scripture later, which is going to be Matthew 20, verses 20 through 23. But a little, couple little things that I uh, found that I wanted to read. The first is about what mothers are. Mothers are teachers. Mothers are disciplinarians. Mothers are cleaning ladies. Some mothers are gardeners and mowers of lawns. And most mothers understand that baking cookies is more important than washing windows. Mothers are nurses and doctors and psychologists and counselors and chauffeurs and coaches. Y'all get paid the amount of money that doctors get paid? Okay. Mothers are developers of personalities, molders of vocabularies, and shapers of attitudes. Mothers are soft voices saying, I love you. And mothers are a link to God, a child's first impression of God's love. I actually love that last little part because I've never really thought about it. As a child comes into the world, the first connection, even in the womb, the first connection is with the mother. But as the child comes into the wor world, they understand love through what a mother shows. So that actually is the first understanding they have of God's love, um, which shows the vital importance of what moms do for their children. It isn't just about bringing children into the world. It isn't just about bringing children into the world and then guiding them through life. But they give them an example of what unconditional love is all about, and that is the kind of love from God. There was a lady that had a column. Her name is Irma Bombeck, and I know a lot of y'all have probably heard this before. Uh, it might even have been read here before. But it's uh, it tells of God in the act of creating mothers and what all went into creating mothers. And I wanted to share this with you because I found it was very, very interesting. So as I read, listen to each part because it really does define what moms are all about. It says that on one day, God, on the day that God created mothers, he had already worked long over time. And an angel said to him, Lord, you sure are spending a lot of time on this one. The Lord turned and said, have you read the specs on this model? She is supposed to be completely washable, but not plastic. She is to have 180 moving parts, all of them replaceable. She is to have a kiss that will heal everything from a broken leg to a broken heart. Has anybody had a kiss that healed a broken bone? Any moms has healed broken bones? Uh, how about broken hearts? She is to have a lap that will disappear whenever she stands up. She is to be able to function on black coffee and leftovers. And she is supposed to have six pair of hands. Six pair of hands, said the angel. That's impossible. It's not the six pairs of hands that bothers me, said the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes. She is supposed to have one pair that sees through closed doors. So whenever she says, what are you kids doing in there? She already knows what they're doing in there. She is to have another pair in the back of her head to see all the things she is not supposed to see, but must see. And then she is to have one pair right in the front that can look at a child that is just goofed and communicate love and understanding without saying a word. That's too much, said the angel. You can't put that much in one model. Why don't you rest for a while and resume your creating tomorrow? No, I can't, said the Lord. I'm close to creating someone very much like myself. I've already come up with a model who can heal herself when she's sick, who can feed a family of six with one pound of hamburger meat. Is that possible? Family of six with a pound of hamburger meat? <laughs> and who can persuade a nine-year-old to take a shower. 
Then the angel looked at the model of motherhood a little more closely and said, She's too soft. Oh, but she's tough, said the Lord. You'd be surprised at how much this mother can do. Can she think, asked the angel. Not only can she think, said the Lord, but she can reason, compromise, and persuade. Then the angel reached over and touched her cheek. This one has a leak, he said. I told you that you couldn't put that much in one, one model. That's not a leak, said the Lord. That's a tear. What's a tear for, asked the angel. Well, it's for joy, for sadness, for sorrow, for disappointment, for pride. You're a genius, said the angel. And the Lord said, oh, but I didn't put that there. Once again, I do want to say to all the mothers, thank you. Matter of fact, I know we don't have a big crowd, but would all the moms please stand up? I know we did it this morning, but would y'all please stand up one more time and let us give y'all a round of applause. Thank y'all very, very, very much. This, not, this evening I have a message that is probably different than a lot of mothers that are looked at in the Bible and will be in the book of Matthew chapter 20, going through verse 20 through verse 23. And it's not a mother that gets talked about a lot, but as we were going over the past weeks leading up to uh, Easter and the crucifixion and the resurrection, as we came across this mother, I thought to myself, you know, she doesn't get talked about a lot. And even though there's not a lot that we know about her, there's some very important attributes that I wanted to bring uh, to light this evening. The book of Matthew, starting uh, chapter 20, starting with verse 20, going through verse 23. Let us hear the reading of God's word. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. The Word of God for the people of God. A lot of times when we talk about this scripture, we talk about, because right after this, the disciples get sort of angry that she would come and bring James and John and say, hey, let them sit at your right hand and your left hand, and they get a little bothered that they're trying to get authority in, king, in the kingdom. But as we reflect back on this mother, I want to ask a question to all mothers here. Are one of your wishes that your child will one day live in heaven forever. If it is, raise your hand. This woman has come to Jesus and what she is asking, not to get very specific yet, but what she is asking is that her children, her two sons, will live and reign in the kingdom of heaven. I do not find anything wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I would be willing to say that if there is anything that a mother should teach their child above everything, above how to behave, above manners, about, above how to carry themselves, above everything, I think that a mother should teach their child about Jesus Christ. I think that that is first and foremost in any child's life. You can live a wonderful life here on earth, and you can be taught, and you can be educated, and you can get a good job, and you can have children and have a good family and have good finances, but if a child is not brought up to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if they are not shown that path, then what good is it if they gain the whole entire world but lose their soul? <laughs> that, I think, when Zebedee's, the uh, mother of Zebedee's son, which is actually the mother of James and John, when she comes to Jesus... I think that what she is doing is a remarkable thing because she is not asking Jesus, when I come into your kingdom, give me a position. That's not what she's asking for. She is asking on behalf of her children. How many mothers here today have went without so that their children could have? 
I would be willing to say that most mothers here usually think about their children first and then they put themselves last. I will deal with what is left, but I will take care of my children first. That is what this lady is doing. I think that that, once again, I just want to say, I think that that is one of the most important attributes of a mom is to bring your children up and they'll know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. There's a little story that I was reading about James Dotson. I don't know if any of y'all know James Dotson. Anybody here heard of James Dotson? I've got a book and it's called Raising Boys and it talks about how as a man we need to get back into raising boys like boys. We live in a society now where it says, well, you need to raise your boys different. They need to be able to be just as feminine as they are masculine, and you don't need to raise them to be too tough because they need to be you know, feminine as well. Well, this is talking about it's all right to raise a boy to be a boy. It's all right for a boy to be tough. There's nothing wrong with a boy being tough. And... Um, it's very, very insightful. But as I was reading this little story, he said that he can remember a time when he came home and his son, Ryan, was a small baby and it had been a terrible day for his wife. And Ryan had been sick and had cried all day long. Any mothers here ever had a day when your child was young where they were sick and cried all day long and it was just one of those days? Any mom's been through that? Any grandmother's been through that? It says that once uh, the day started, she was changing his diaper, the telephone rang, and Shirley reached over 